because we were just like, you've got to be kidding. Like our, our friend has died and you're honoring him by smoking a joint? You've got to be kidding. You see, a true friend, a true friend will truly honor you whether you're alive or whether you're dead. You see, Jonathan, Jonathan dies in battle with his dad. Both Saul and Jonathan die. And David gets word that this has happened. So his best buddy, his, his comrade, the guy that he bears all with, has now died in battle, which is very, very, very honorable. Let me read some of that to you. This is what David says about Jonathan dying. He says, I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You were very dear to me. Your love for me was wonderful, more wonderful than that of a woman. Now, he's not saying that Jonathan replaced women in his life. But isn't it interesting if you link and you come to next week's message when I tell you that you marry your best friend? His best friend, Jonathan, the one that he loved, the one that he was willing to to bear everything to, to him was better than a woman. Because they were friends. Biblical friends. That's who you marry. That's who my best friend is, my wife. That's who I bear all to, literally, my wife. Carrie is my best friend. She's not just my wife. She's my friend. Biblically speaking, a friend is a lover, a person that is willing to love you. In 2 Samuel chapter 9, as I just talked about where if a friend, uh, you honor friends whether they're alive or passed away, and you honor them rightly, we see this now happen. (laughs) David is grieving for his friend, and this is what he says. He's now king of Israel. Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul, to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake. Now, I'm going to screw up the names. Don't worry about it. Now, there was a servant of Saul's household named Zimba. They called him to appear before David, and the king said to him, Are you Zimba, your servant, he replied. The king asked, Is there no one still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Saul's the guy that was trying to kill him. Jonathan's his best friend, and David wants to honor both of them. And Zimba answered to the king, there is still a son, actually, it's a son of Jonathan's. But he's crippled in both feet, which back then was a big, big, big issue. Where is he, the king answered. Zimba answered, he is at the house of Machir, son of Emil in Lodabar. So King David had him brought from Lodabar, from the house of Makur, son of Emil. Now, I'm going to screw up his name. When, oh, Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David. He bowed down to pay him honor. And David said, son of Jonathan, don't be afraid. David said to him, For I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Jonathan's son bowed down and said, What is your servant that you notice a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Ziba. Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. 
You and your sons and your servants are to farm the land for him. So not only is he giving him his land back, he's giving him a whole group of servants to go with him to farm his land because he's crippled, right? Uh, and bring in the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for. And Mephibosheth, grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. That is a huge statement, that he will always eat at my table. This is not right. Nobody eats at the king's table. Just the king and the queen. That's all that eats at the king's table. Nobody eats at the king's table, especially not a crippled person. And David is honoring him because of his friendship with Jonathan. He doesn't even know this son. He's just honoring him because of his friendship with Jonathan. And he's saying, I give everything back. Everything that your dad owned, or that your granddad Saul owned, you can have it all. All the land, everything back. You can have all of that. I'm going to give you servants. And you are always part of my family. You will always eat at my table. It goes on to say that Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table. David honored his friend. David honored the fact that his friend was willing to die for him, was willing to give up the kingship for him. Now, I don't want you to think that what I'm saying is all of your friends should do everything for you. Because that would be selfish, wouldn't it? Go back to when it said that they became one in spirit, that they became friends, that they had an intimacy about them, that they would talk about anything, that they would be just themselves. That is a biblical friend. Now, I know that we have friends. And I don't want you to think that I'm telling you to go get rid of all your friends. But at the same time, the Bible's teaching us something here. Proverbs 17:17 17, 17 says simply this. Proverbs is a book of wisdom. It's very wise, and it says in chapter 17, verse 17, a friend loves at all times, no matter what, at all times. New Testament. Listen to what Jesus says to his disciples. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. He didn't hold anything back. He, he, didn't, he went past the surface. He was willing to go deeper with his friends. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. So much gets in our way. So much gets in our way of really, truly having friends. Sometimes it's just us that gets in the way of really, truly having friends. Sometimes it's, it's them that gets in the way, but then you need to look at, are they really, truly your friend? When, when, time, when hard times happen, that's when you tend to find out who your real, true friends really, really are. We have this song that Paul sings. If you don't go to this church and know who Paul is, he's one of our worship leaders called Friend of God. He sings it like every week. And uh, it says, I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Oh my goodness. Jesus calls us friend. Not, not like the world friend, but the friend that's willing to die for you. The friend that's willing to be a true friend. 
See, in, in our world today, we put everything in front of that. We put everything ahead of that. We put all of our friends here ahead of the friend. 